Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to talk about how you can use Padlet as an alternative to Flip. Now, you've probably heard Flip is going away, Microsoft is not continuing that as a standalone product, and I know many teachers have come to rely on that as an awesome platform and tool in class to have students engage in video discussions um, and be able to share their thoughts on camera. Um, so I wanna show you how you can use Padlet to get that going. If you're new to Padlet, it's very easy to get started. You're gonna head over to padlet.com. Um, you're gonna create an account for yourself. I recommend using the sign in with Google option and using your redlandschools.net Google account to log in. Um, and then you'll notice Padlet has both free and paid accounts. I'm using a free account over here. I'll show you how you can get started on this. Um, so once you're logged in, you'll see I have a Padlet over here, one that I've created before yours might be blank. Um, and uh, first thing I wanna mention is we are limited to just three Padlets uh, with the free version, um, but that's fine because that allows you to do three assignments at a time and you can just delete the oldest one and create a new one. And that's the way you can keep this going. You just can't have more than three active at a time. So, um, so over here in Padlet, um, what you're going to do to get started is you're going to go up to here to the make button and click that. And this will allow you to make a new Padlet for your class or a new assignment where they'll be able to add little video posts. Um, so you got some options here. I'm going to go with the blank board choice select that. It's going to formulate our Padlet for us. And then uh, I've got some options over here. The first thing is I've got a space for a title. So this is where I can put the name of my assignment. Um, introduce yourself is what I'm going to go with here. You can go with whatever you want. And then you've got some options for format. Do you want these to appear as a wall? Do you want it to be kind of like a stream of all the options? I'm going to go with grid because um, that'll look very similar to the old flip um, classrooms that I used to have. This will be like a grid of all sorts of different videos as my students add their assignments. So uh, grid is what I'm going to pick. You go with what you want or experiment with some of the different ones here. Um, sections that can either be on or off. I'm going to go off. So it's just one big grid of everything. Uh, and then I'm going to click done in this. And so here is my Padlet and I can get in here and I can customize this. If you go over here to the settings gear and click that, um, you'll see you have a place where you can change the title, the description, can add an icon if you want. This is fun because you get all these little emojis over here. So uh, we're going to go with the silly one for this and save. And you'll see that adds it over here in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, wallpaper, maybe you don't like the dunes over here. You can click that. You've got color-based wallpaper, gradients, um, textures, photos, all sorts of things like that. I'm going to go with uh, kind of this like ocean looking thing as mine. So I'm going to click save play around with all those kinds of things. Uh, you got color scheme, font, posts, all sorts of different settings that you can enable here. Now, one that I wanna point out is if you scroll down a little bit over here in engagement, there's a space where you can choose to leave comments on or off. So uh, typically, if you're gonna start this out, I would turn comments off, uh, but after you kind of set the ground rules with your students, maybe you wanna turn comments on so they can comment on each other's posts. That's sometimes a great way to drive engagement um, and collaboration in here. So we're gonna turn that on. Uh, you can play around with reactions and uh, all sorts of things like this. The other part down here at the bottom is content. You've got tools here for moderation. Um, you can go with none. That means as soon as they post it, it's live. Or you can do auto moderation where it's just looking for uh, things that might be inappropriate and then it blocks that. Um, or if you want to be, uh, you want total control over this, you can make it be manual here at the beginning uh, where you have to preview students' videos before they go live on the Padlet. So I'm going to go with none. Let's assume I've already laid the ground rules for my students and they know what uh, is expected. Uh, remakes. Right now, everyone can take my Padlet and remake this as their own. I'm going to turn that off and just say admins only. I'm the only one. Um, that I want to be able to uh, get permission to do remakes. So there's uh, all sorts of settings there. You can dive into appearance and layout and engagement and all that kind of stuff. But for now, that's enough. Okay, so my Padlet is set up. I am now ready to share this Padlet out to my students. And then they'll be able to use this little plus button down here to add their own videos or their own posts on here to our Padlet. Um, so the next question is, how do we share this thing out with students? Real simple. Over here on your Padlet, go to the upper right-hand corner find that little share arrow, click that thing. And over here, you've got some share permissions. So the first thing I want you to take a look at is up here at the top where it says visitor permissions. Um, we've got some options over here. So when your students visit the Padlet, what do you want them to be able to do? I'm going to allow them to be writers so that they can make their own posts here, but I'm not going to let them be moderators. Um, it's not going to be a read only Padlet. You've got all those different settings available here for you. The next one over here is the link privacy. I want you to take a look at this with me as well. 
you'll see there are four different tiers here and let's start from most open to most restrictive. I'm going to start up here at the top or at the bottom with public. If I turn this on, it means my Padlet is public and anybody on the open internet can go to padlet.com and find this thing and add videos. I don't want to do that for a classroom setting, so I'm not going to do that. Next option is secret login. This is good. I like the secret part, but not the login part. Um, Padlet right now is approved for teachers to create accounts, but it's not approved for students to make their own Padlet accounts. We don't want students hosting their own Padlets. Um, so that is disabled, which means if you enable this option, students aren't going to be able to log into your Padlet because they can't set up their own Padlet account. So skip that one. As a classroom teacher, I want to recommend you pick from one of these two. Either secret, this is going to make the link to this Padlet secret, and the only people that can add here are people that you give the link to. That's kind of nice. Or if you want extra security, you can do secret with a password. In this case, only the people that have the link and know your secret password can access it. So if you wanted to, some password protection on this, you'd pick that option. And then you'd need to give your students the link and you'd also need to tell them the password that they need to enter for this. Uh, I'm going to go with secret this time. I think most of the time that's good enough for us. Um, so that's it. That's all we have to set there. And then the next part that I'm going to do is come down here to copy link to clipboard. Once you click this, it will copy the link that goes to this Padlet to your clipboard on your computer. And you can now paste that link anywhere you want. So most of the common ways that we would do this is fire up Google Classroom, make an assignment, and drop in that link into Google Classroom. That way, when students click that link, it takes them out to Padlet, and they can add their own videos. All right. The last thing I want to show you is what does this look like on the student side of things? So I've got another uh, browser window over here that I'm going to launch up. And I'm going to paste in that Padlet link that we just went with. And once I click that Padlet link, you'll see this loads up the Padlet over here in kind of the student view. It looks exactly like the teacher view. And now what I can do is I can click this little button down here to add something to my Padlet, and it gives me some options. The first thing I recommend is teach your students that over here in subject, that's where they're going to type their name. That will kind of name their post and you'll be able to see who made which post. So that's like a nice little strategy there for you. Then the next part is down here, you've got all sorts of options, things that students can add to a Padlet or upload to a Padlet. Um, if you click this plus 11 over here, teach your students to do that. The option that they're looking for is video recorder. Now, I want to preface this by saying the video recorder here is fairly bare bones. It's not going to have all the nice filters and things like that that we're used to in Flip. But this will allow students to record a simple video and get it over here in Padlet. And you'll be able to do the majority of what you used to love about Flip right here in Padlet. Um, so students can click this. By the way, I want to mention, if you're new to Padlet and you haven't played with this before, get in here and take a look at some of these other things because you can use this for all sorts of class discussions or upload your work or upload a photo or add your ideas to this discussion board. You can use this as a group brainstorm and there's all sorts of cool things you can do with it. But to use it as a flip replacement, what we're going to do next is click video recorder. And then it's going to ask us some permissions the first time on the student end. So you might have to walk them through this. Yes, we're going to allow permission for the camera and the microphone. Now you'll see my camera is being used right now for this video that I'm recording. But if not, there'd be a little preview here. And I could then click this button and I could record my little video clip and I'd see a preview of what I look like here and we'd hear all the audio. And then once I was done with this whole thing, I could pause. Um, I could play it back if I wanted to. I could discard it and restart if I wasn't happy with my video. Um, and then if I click play back and save, it'll give me a little preview of what the whole thing looks like. I click this button. I can watch myself. I can listen to myself. And then I can click save. When I click save, it's going to save that video for me. And it's going to upload it over here to the Padlet. So you'll see if we give it a second, it's going to do that right now. Boom, there's my video. I can now add a caption. I can add some additional text if I want to. And then when I'm ready, I can click publish as a student and boom, there is my video clip added over here using my webcam. And if I get out of student mode and I go back over here to my teacher mode, you'll notice, boom, it's right over there as well. So my class of 35 students all record their videos and all of a sudden, boom, I've got a grid of 35 videos here. Students can watch each other's videos. I can go in and watch videos and uh, students can either add, can also add comments to one another. So there's a lot to unpack in Padlet. There's a ton to play around with, um, but these are at least the basics that will get you started in using Padlet as an alternative to Flip.